one of the best things about reading, I always think, is when you read something, an idea in a book that corresponds very nearly to something you have thought yourself. And you think, okay, other, somebody else has thought the same as me. And I found such a piece in a book by Amor Toads called The Lincoln Highway. And I just want to read a short passage from that. Each uh, chapter in this book is in the voice of a different character. And this is the character of a young woman called Sally. And this is what she has to say. At last week's Sunday service, Reverend Pike read a parable from the Gospels in which Jesus and his disciples, having arrived at a village, are invited by a woman into her home. <coughs> having made them all comfortable, this woman, Martha, retreats into her kitchen to fix them something to eat. And all the while she's cooking and generally seeing to everyone's needs by filling empty glasses and getting second helpings, her sister, Mary, is sitting at Jesus' feet. Eventually, Martha has had enough, and she lets her feelings be known. Lord, she says, can't you see that my idler of the sister has left me to do all the work? Why don't you tell her to lend me a hand? Or something to that effect. And Jesus, he replies, Martha, you are troubled by too many things when only one thing is needful. And it is Mary who has chosen the better way. Well, I'm sorry. But if you ever needed proof that the Bible was written by a man, there you have it. I am a good Christian. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe that Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, was born of the Virgin Mary and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, and on the third day rose again. I believe that having ascended to heaven, he will come again to judge the quick and the dead. I believe that Noah built an ark and herded every manner of living thing up the gangplank two by two before it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. I am even willing to believe that Moses was spoken to by a burning bush. But I am not willing to believe that Jesus Christ our Saviour who at the drop of a hat would heal a leper, or restore sight to the blind, would turn his back on a woman who was taking care of a household. So I don't blame him. Who I blame is Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and every other man who served as a priest or preacher since. From a man's point of view, the one thing that's needful is that you sit at his feet and listen to what he has to say, no matter how long it takes him to say it, or how often he said it before. <laughs> By his figuring, you have plenty of time for sitting and listening, because a needle is something that makes itself. The manna, it falls from heaven, and with the snap of the fingers, the water can be turned into wine. Any woman who's gone to the trouble of making an apple pie can tell you that's how a man sees the world. To bake an apple pie, you've got to first make the dough. You've got to cut the butter into the flour, gather up with a beaten egg and a few tablespoons of ice water, let it bind overnight. The next day, you've got to peel and core the apples, cut them into wedges, and toss them with cinnamon sugar. You've got to roll out the crust and assemble the pie. Then you bake it at 425 degrees for 15 minutes and 350 degrees for another 45. Finally, when supper is over, you carefully plate a slice and set it on the table, where in mid-sentence, a man will fork half of it into his mouth and swallow without chewing so that he can get right back to saying what he was saying without the chance of being interrupted. And strawberry preserves, don't even get me started on strawberry preserves. <laughs> Just as well I do all the baking in our house. 